you guys are stoked. You heard the whole thing. Um, <laughs> Zoom people, apparently I didn't do the thing where I re I connect to my audio. So um, I think you guys can hear me now. So, <laughs> so hooray. <laughs> Anyways, whatever I said before, you'll be able to pick it up on the recording if you need to. Oh, yay. Everyone hears me. This is so fun. Okay. <laughs> so I was talking about how this, what we perceive, it's just a mirage. It's not as if it has any power to affect us to make us feel a certain way or anything. So when we're uh, when we're manifesting ourselves, let's say it's not even really manifesting, it's like expressing ourselves more like, because it's kind of like, a, it's kind of like light going through some veils and just expressing itself in this way, right? Uh, that's what it, like a physical form is, let's say that. Because a physical form, it's not really physical. That's the thing. And, and, and all this stuff is about like this physical form. It, you, you see like where you're perceiving everything from when, you, when you're taking it, like when you're taking it any kind of hard way, you're perceiving it as if you live right in here and you're the one looking out through these eyes. <laughs> That's not even where you are. You're not in a body. You're not in there. Okay, so, so, you know, you're taking it as if you're in there, of course, it's going to be hard, right? Because this, uh, basically, the, the, what you perceive is the physicality is like a program of thoughts. It's like a program uh, uh, structure of thoughts, okay? And it's swimming around, and you can kind of like say it's pre-programmed by your ancestors, even though that's really you, right? OK, like but in the story of things, it's pre-programmed like like before before the you that you think you are right now took shape and form. Uh, the mind of it was already pre-programmed to do certain shit. OK, aging is one of them. <laughs> okay. So the thing about these pre-programs, though, the thing the thing about these pre-programs is that they're subject to your choice to your interpretation from moment to moment. These things are subject to your interpretation. It's so fucking weird. It's like unbelievable. It doesn't matter what we do on the surface. We could eat the best food. We could like rub piss all over ourselves. I've seen that before. <laughs> I was on a bodybuilding um I was on a bodybuilding uh forum one time. I used to be into into like like heavy duty weightlifting trying to form the body into a certain form that I wanted it to be, right? And I was on this forum and there and, and there were all these people on there and one of the women is like, "You know what? I just want to find out what to do." I you know, tell me what to do and I'll do it. And if it entails eating shit, I don't care. I just want to know what it is that I need to do here. Right? And the thing is, none of this shit seems to work. And, you know, you could go about it happily for a little while, maybe like for 10 years, even you can be like, oh, yeah, I got yoga. I I'm good. I'm never going to age. Everything's going to stay flexible. I'm going to keep on uh, producing collagen. Everything's going to be cool. Right. And you're doing that for a while. And then you're like, oh, fuck, shit's starting to happen. Like, <laughs> how come that didn't work? OK, it's because. It's because of our, it's because of our thinking, you guys, it act, actually nothing in the physical does anything. It's completely like a, like a magic wand. It doesn't do shit. Okay. It's completely in the mental aspect of it. It's, it's completely in the way we think about ourselves. See, we, the way we think about ourselves in relation to other people is totally different from the way that we actually are, the way that we actually communicate with them. And the way we think about ourselves as a being, as our power and stuff like that is totally wrong. It's ass backwards, you guys. 
it's a, it's it's ridiculous and you know like i'm just starting to see the depths of it within myself there's been some huge awakenings around this this just this week because it's like oh my goodness it's so programmed and i'm i'm always glad i i'll get a sense that like i'll feel guilty which i love because i know that when i feel guilty it means that my my thinking needs correction and so when i feel guilty it's kind of like giving me a little hint that i might have missed something in the per, in the perception that i didn't quite catch it kind of like will show me something like that and it's like oh and you know i just relax i'm able to just relax with that because i know it's healing okay when you know it's healing you're able to relax with it the thing is people get scared of this kind of stuff right so i was talking with a friend and she's a, she's a friend who has apparently has 25 years of age okay around 25 okay so she tells she she tells me today she goes oh my god your eyes look so pretty today and i look at her kind of like perplexed and i'm because i you know my mind goes to why is she telling me that and and i remembered like uh like earlier a few days ago she wanted to take a video of me and i said oh no not today my eyes are weeping like crazy right and, you know i'm like not today it's not a good video day and so she came over and she's like oh my goodness what's going on and 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 i told her you know i was blocking my eyes with with, with ann last week we were doing this thing where we we're like putting pressure on the eyeballs like up and down like that and they're like itchy behind them and it felt really good but then after that it was pretty puffy and uh a bunch of tears coming out and stuff like that anyways uh she goes she goes oh well your eyes look really good and i go oh yeah i've been messing around with these little things i put them on the side i just put them right here when i go to sleep i put them on the side so my eyes can't do the thing with the crow's feet while i'm sleeping so then i wake up and it's like all like no crow's feet right here <laughs> <laughs> and she goes oh my gosh i never even thought about that before you know and of course you know she's doing the same expressions but she's not having any wrinkles apparently because she's only 25 year old, years old and apparently because she's got a lot of collagen there but that's not really the case that's not really the reason it's the beliefs about it that are doing it it's not the repeated motion so I could make a magic trick for a little while. And this really occurs to me too. I, that's why I love, I love to follow whatever it is my intuition is guiding me because I get so much out of it. So I'm using these things and they seem to be, they seem to be doing a pretty good job. Right in the morning when I first pull them out off, it's really smooth. And then after a little while, it'll start to wrinkle up again as I make my expressions and believe that making those expressions can possibly cause wrinkles in the skin. <laughs> So mostly it's from the belief perspective that I'm using all of these illusions for to see the belief perspective as it arises in myself. And, you know, I was just kind of like, well, shit, it, what do you do? Just keep on doing this stuff all over yourself as things just get worse and worse and worse and then i saw this woman at the farmer's market and i was like what the fuck because i started to no notice like some creepiness on my arms right you know, is it crepiness 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 on my arms right and <laughs> and you know i've been <laughs> I've been doing a lot of block therapy on my arms to make it look like I don't have that crepiness, right? And it seems like I don't. It, it looks good. So, um, so, so, th so then I, I, so then I'm going, yeah, yeah. But how long is that going to last, right? And and see, see, it's that process right there that has to do with time. You see that thought process? But how long is that going to? That's a thought process. So it's as if, so I see how I've been buying into over and over again, this aging thing. That's the only way I can manifest any kind of aging. I mean, if I'm not buying into the aging thing, you're, you're going to look at me and you're going to be like, damn, she looks 25, right? And it's not going to go up from there. So if I'm not buying into it, that's how it's going to be. That's what I know. So I'm just like and seeing it more and more. And that's the key, you guys, because this is just a code that we uh we programmed ourselves with you could say through our ancestors you know if that res resonates with you it doesn't fucking matter the the thing is it's programmed to age as a choice okay as a choice and each time the program is running its uh its effects uh 
it's giving you an opportunity to either re-believe that, re-choose the same thing, or to choose again consciously, right? And basically, you're just choosing to see that this time thing, it's fucking meaningless. And look at this aging thing is also tied into all suffering. That's another thing that I saw very clearly. This aging thing, people trying to uh, pretend like this aging thing is uh, is something that uh, they want to do, okay? It's not like, it's not to hate on it or anything. I mean, everything we do is beautiful, aging included. It's like everything we do is beautiful, but it's like really uh, ask yourself truly, do I really want to deteriorate or did I just buy that in, buy into something? Did I just buy into some belief that a bunch of people fed to me and now I'm trying to make myself feel better by thinking that I like this fucking shit, okay? It's not, it's, it's great, it's great, it's great. You know, you made it up, you made it up, that's good. Great, it's awesome. Do you wanna keep it is the question. Uh, you know, it's like, it's like, would you really, would you really like to keep this illusion of, shit deteriorating until it's just a big pile of shit. <laughs> right? It's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I see. So a Kahi was talking that whole time and I couldn't hear him and I thought he couldn't hear me. That is freaking awesome. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> everything that occurs is just for fun thank you for playing so i was talking with a friend earlier and she was expressing to to me that it's easy to see some things this way but not other things right and, you know, that's because you're committed to those other things, certain things being real. It's this idea that you need this kind of drama. You know, it's like when you decide, I don't need this kind of drama, this shit doesn't mean anything to you. It's just meaningless stuff. Right. In the moment, what you're getting is kind of like a roller coaster ride because you're getting emotions that you're projecting onto yourself. You're projecting these sensations onto your physical uh, sensory instrument, let's say it is, because it's not a thing. It's not really a thing. As anything at all, this structure of thought, it's like a sensory instrument, is to help you make sense of your illusions, which you cannot really make sense of your illusions. So basically you're interpreting chaos and whenever you think you're right, you're fucking wrong. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you're good now after supposed technical difficulties. Good one, Akahi. Thank you. Hey, thanks for changing your name to Akahi on here. That's very unconfusing for me. <laughs> <laughs> he was using his systemite name on there. <laughs> oh, Jennifer wants to talk to me. Okay. Let's see what's happening here. Jennifer. Unmute yourself. Okay, um, I don't hear Jennifer, but we'll see what happens with that. So, let's see, programming. Oh, Aloha, Lo I love you, Jason. Thank you for joining. You look gorgeous, but your lips on the vid video doesn't match with the sound and the volume is low. Well, that was two minutes ago turn your volume up. <laughs> I don't know. If anyone wants to be my producer, you can. 
<laughs> I'm open to having a producer. That's fine with me. <laughs> so the only reason why it seems like you bounce in and out is that you change your mind. You, you, it's like you bounce in and out of awareness. It's like, okay, you're making up your mind that this is a mirage. It's a, you know, you're basically, basically making up your mind about who you are. Right. Oh, by the way, Milo, you can come on zoom. There's a link right at the top of the video. Come on zoom on zoom. My lips match what I'm saying. <laughs> my lips match the sound <laughs> by the way. <laughs> So the only reason for popping in and out of awareness like that is that your mind is swinging. It's swinging into illusion. So just watch it. You don't have to judge it or anything. You don't have to even have to try to change it or correct it. It gets changed and corrected all on its own. You're just being aware of it is what's, what it is important there. So speaking of awareness, I mentioned feeling guilty. So in that one with a 25 year old friend of mine, um, she even you know even when we say 25 year, years old it's not a true measurement it's not a true measurement it's just something to indicate right it's just something to indicate like how much uh time have you projected into this perception at this you know at this point when we meet i mean really it's like not an actual measurement of anything that's the thing we take it as an actual measurement Time isn't an actual measurement. It, it doesn't do anything. You can't say that due to time, a person is supposed to look this way at this time. It's not like that, but we believe that actually scares people. Like it would scare someone if I'm like on my, uh, on my license, it says I'm 75 years old and then I look like I'm 25 right? It would scare the shit out of people. At this point, it would share the, scare the shit out of me. I could, how, could I, how do I know? Because I don't perceive that myself as 25. That's how I know. Because like, if, if given the choice, that's where I would, that's, that's what I would have a perception of. If given the choice, that's what I would have the perception of. That much uh, collagen, you know, it also means that things are, 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 are functioning really nicely. Okay. It also means that things are function functioning really well. It is not just a, uh, a, a, like a, like a physical thing. It is the way, the way we're holding these bodies out and expressing them is due to belief. It's due to where, you know, we're projecting a decline in functioning. Actually, um, gray hair is actually turning off a, a certain function so that now it's, you know, and that's a decision. That's actually a decision. That's what I'm seeing that that, okay, great. That just makes me that much more aware of what I'm thinking, right? So I don't think it's ugly or anything like that, or it's bad or anything like that, or I can't use it for something. I can absolutely use the perception of aging for something. And that is to see through the illusions that I'm still holding, the misbeliefs that I'm still holding about what this means. See, the whole point of all of this is to lift the veil and to lift the veil. We have to be willing to see through our misperceptions. What people th do is go through life holding on to belief. And that's what really what makes us old. Right. So what comes out of my mouth, and this is where the guilty part, part feels, uh, you know, comes in. I like to have a big uh, lead up to this, apparently. <laughs> So <laughs> what, <laughs> what comes out of my mouth is because uh, she goes, oh, I don't even notice that. And I go, oh, well, that's because you're young. And I'm like, there it is. There it is. And it's like, whoa, I get rocked when I get that perception now. And I'm so glad. You guys see why I'm glad about that? I don't care if I get a guilty feeling. All that is for sure to... to <laughs> can't even talk. All it is, is to show me that I'm holding something that I can be released from right now. Such a huge awakening. It was like, boom, right? It's like, that's like, that's a repetitive thought that occurs in my mind. It's because of youth. It's because of youth. It's because of youth. Youth means collagen means when you express, it doesn't make a wrinkle. <laughs> She can make all the same expressions of me as me, raise her eyebrows, smile, do all the things. 
but it doesn't make wrinkly a wrinkle appear right and we automatically think that has to do with time but we're wrong with it's a projection right here right now it's not a guilty thing it's not like oh i see you've got a bunch of wrinkles i bet you think like shit i fucking taught you that it's up to me it's up to me to even see through your wrinkles okay <laughs> I taught you how to think about think like that. That's why you're showing up in my perception thinking you got wrinkles. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. <laughs> uh, my daughter the other day told me, you're just all wrinkled up now, aren't you, mom? <laughs> okay, she's saying that she didn't. This is what I heard. This is my perception. She was like... <laughs> you can correct me if i'm wrong though okay <laughs> she, she's right in the other room <laughs> anyways this was my perception that my daughter's sitting next to me she tells me you're just all wrinkled up here's a bag of wrinkles you're just like i said yeah i'm just like a raisin or something like that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we were joking around. <laughs> of course, we're always joking around. <laughs> she was <laughs> she she says it is she says it in a certain way though. I get it in a certain way, which is really nice. I I feel the love behind it. It's like she just she she's she's just so uh so devoted and present for me seeing through it. <laughs> it's really good uh oh milo you came on good job you followed that prompt to come on zoom now i can hear you well but i can't see you so i'm going to go with this digging what you're laying down thank you very much all right roberto no robert not roberto <laughs> uh, i was wondering if maybe guilt is what binds the ego to the sense of being the doer oh yeah that's a good point yeah well you know you could say ego binds it binds everything for everything right oh it matches for you i'm so glad i i'm glad we got the technical part working in here too <laughs> it's matching for people on facebook too all right uh yeah guilt basically guilt is is at the bottom of everything that you know uh, that defiles the truth about you uh like basically guilt every wrinkle is guilt let's say that okay uh debt is guilt let's say that that's a guilty guilty concept it's a really guilty concept um and the thing is like i was saying earlier now put these together it's a mirage it's not really present. It's not really there. We only believe in these things because we attach any kind of value to it. So it's not like about hating on debt or hating on wrinkles. It's just about making a different choice. It's appreciating the illusion for, uh, for the gift that it provides. And that is what it's for. You know, using it to undo the illusion. It, it brings up the fact that you wouldn't keep that if you had a choice. That's the fact. You wouldn't keep that if you had the choice. Notice that. So anything that you wouldn't keep, just being alert to the fact that you're projecting it right now, only right now, right? This is always changeful. In, a, in an illusion, it's completely changeful. You know why? Because it's not true. What's true is that you can't have any kind of uh, journey away from wholeness, okay? Uh, so there's no way you could project a body, you know, you could project a light body. That's what you do in creation. It's like that. It's extending, okay? Projecting on earth is extending in creation. Let's say that, okay? You could extend the light and that's basically, you know, an expression of yourself, right? You can extend a light body, but it can't have problems. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it doesn't have any problem. It can't do that because you can only think like God and God thinks of you in a certain way that's super, super loving. Okay. You can't imagine how loving this thought is of you coming from God to you, God's creation. Right. And so when you, when, when you deny that thought and try to think on your own, you're not really thinking, but you're making manifestations in a dreamlike state, okay? These manifestations are not real. They're not your reality. They can be completely changed in an instant. So it's to be open to this. The way we think about this is if we're on this trajectory where we're going from a young person to an old person as we're deteriorating and basically falling apart and getting all painful and shit, right? And then the end, we're in a coffin. That's the way we think about ourselves. That's the way we think about what our life is. And see, this life that we're perceiving is not our life. It's a projection of a life, okay? But through it, we can learn what we're thinking that we do not want anymore. And through it, we can choose to be released of thoughts that basically defile us. They defile the creation of us. They prevent us from sharing with God. The only way we can share with God is through joy. Okay. And it's like, it could be said that in heaven, God misses us. It could be said that in heaven, God misses us because God isn't getting the benefit of our joy, the joy of creation and knowing what creation is. So there's nothing God wants more than to bring our awareness back to awareness of creation and who we are and our, perce our, our perfection, not our perception, right? Who we are and, and our perception is not who we are. This is an expression, okay? This is just an expression that's like a programmed ex expression. It comes forth based on all of beliefs, everything we've been thinking, um, everything we've been programmed. First, we come in with programs. Like I said, as a newborn baby, there's these programs. But through learning about the world and having these experiences, we're choosing over and over again whether we would keep these programs, the way we uphold them in our experience. So when it comes to feeling guilty, the feeling of guilt in that instant where you notice it and it gives you some kind of like a red flag. You don't need to do anything more than notice it. It's helpful. When you start trying to use it, when you try to start trying to correct yourself or anything like that, that's when it's not helpful. It's not being helpful. Okay. Because you don't need to use it. What uses it is your inner teacher can be, can be called the Holy Spirit. That's what uses it. That's what uses the guilt to show you and to correct your thinking. But if you would rather use the guilt for your own means, then you block that from occurring. See, that's why people get stuck in guilt again and again and again. Guilt is just a sign that your thinking needs to be corrected. Okay. So you take guilt in it, like with humility, right? With humility, not like, fuck you, guilt. Guilt has no place in me and shit like that. Okay. <laughs> with humility and there's something for me to learn here, right? This is, a, this is, this is a learning opportunity. When you take it like that, then it's automatically healing. Anything that you get a perception of is automatically healing if you'll take it that way. So then anyways, I'm sitting at the farmer's market and I get a perception of people coming around with barely any sleeves on and the wrinkliest fucking arms I've ever seen. One of them showed me her wrinkly arms like this. She goes, God, I hate my skin. 
And then she goes like this and she like pr crinkles her arm down like this. And she does a thing where she like wrinkles it up. She's like, see, I've got my own, uh, I've got my own ah-ah. Uh ah-ah -uh. uh -uh is the spiky lava rock here in Hawaii. I've got my own ah-ah. Uh -uh. and, and I'm like, actually, I think your skin looks great. You know, like actually, you know, I was like, a few minutes before that, I saw something that it was like, okay, anything looks good <laughs> next to that now. <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> but actually, your skin looked pretty good. I'm like, I like actually, your skin looks awesome to me. Um, but it's just funny because I get people showing me this stuff. You know, it's like, and I, and, and, and that's how I know it's giving to me. That's like, that's my Kuliana. People are showing me this stuff and they're showing me and they're, um, you know, basically this is what I'm suffering over right now. Right. And the way that it's, it's presented is not such, it seems like it's not such hardcore suffering, but I can see past that. And it is, it's really deep. It's a really deep suffering. And it's just kind of like everyone's suffering about it. Aren't we all just suffering over this aging thing? Doesn't this suck? But Hey, isn't it funny? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right so i could see how it's my kuleana you know it's really given to me like that and in hawaiian that's like another way of saying saying responsibility and um and and basically you know it's not the kind of responsibility like the ego like i'm gonna do this or something like that it's just it's just really playfully letting me know to be aware of this because this is something that's given me this is something i could be really effective with this is a you know, something I could really help my friends and, 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 you know, eventually, of course, the whole world see through it. Right. Um, and, 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 you know, be able to look at everyone in the whole world and they all look about 25, like what we would consider a healthy, um, 25 year old in the, in the world that we perceive what I'm getting is that it's something like that, um, that we, uh, that we express it as light bodies. Yes. I just wanted to point out that I've listened to a lot of near-death experiencers. Near-death experiencers, okay. Yeah, and they have a similar report that when they're on the other side, right, all of their relatives or friends or other people, they're all around 25 to 33. They're 25 all... to 33 is what she's saying. Yeah. So people with near near-death experiences are reporting that that's what they see on the other side. Um, you know, that's just... If you, if you just go and, you know, it's whatever it is to you, maybe it's 40, you know, it's just like whatever it is to you that just feels the most good, the most comfortable and healthy, vibrant, buoyant, all of that kind of stuff. That's more like our natural expression. And there's no reason why we wouldn't be able to express as we wanted within an illusion as well. There's no reason except for belief, belief in uh, these concepts like time. Time is a huge, you know, it, it's a huge hook for us. And we don't notice a lot of the times that we're hooked. You know, um, I'm aware of some subtleties that most people I, I, I perceive at this point in time are not aware of, uh, you know, these different subtleties, like these little guilt feelings. I get these little guilt feelings letting me know that I'm off course on a particular thing. A lot of people in the, in the world, I think, uh, at least from my perspective, wouldn't catch it when they said something like that's because you're young right i i can't even say that without feeling something that's like it's telling me i'm way off base with that that's way off base in fact it's mean it's a mean thing to say you do not want that for her <laughs> of course or myself she is me yeah that's it that's exactly right that's exactly right. But it's like, uh, you know, I start, I, I start seeing it like this. Oh, my sweet friend. I, I don't want that for her. I don't want to see her grow old. That sucks. Right. I mean, it, it's, it, it, it's, it's not, it's not her will. That's the thing. It's not her will to grow old. It's not her true will. It's not our true will to grow old. That's an ego's will. That's an imposter will. Okay. So for me, I just keep aligning my will with the Holy Spirit. I just keep aligning my will with the Holy Spirit, okay? And whatever kind of uh, things that I seem to use on the surface, you know, I have different things. I have like 
expensive creams, which is fucking with me like crazy. It is hilarious. These expensive ass creams, right? Oh my gosh. I probably, you guys, if you were listening to Wisdom Dialogues, I reported that I ran out of that shit, right? And then I went for a weekend. And I was like, I don't have the, you know, how you're using some shit and you get attached to it. And you're like, you run out of the shit, right? And so I don't have it for a weekend. And I'm like, I know this is, I know what this is. You know, I, I'm stoked about it. I'm stoked to be having that kind of perception because it, it like tunes me into something. So then I'm like, oh, okay, well, okay. I know it takes a long time for shit to get here, like three weeks for shit to get here, okay? So I just, the next time go to order, I go to order way in advance. Guess what? I'm running out of it now. And it seems to be lost in the mail. So I'm going, this is just hilarious. I know all of these things are magic tricks and they have no effect whatsoever. And that's why this is, this is easy for me. It's easy for me to talk about. It's easier. It's easy for me to feel the emotion that, that, that arises, right? It's easy for me to discuss it with the, even if I need to, I didn't need to discuss it with a, with a company. Um, any, any of this kind of stuff, it just, it's just so simple because I know what it's for and see how I'm talking about something that you might think is kind of like mundane, maybe meaningless, whatever it is. It is. This is the thing though. The, these triggers and these, you know, a lot of people don't even know these are triggers because they're real subtle. Um, they're to trigger us to pursue the uh, reality we gave to time and its ability to cause effects on bodies. See that? So it's as if, and these creams, they can't do, they're nothing. They are nothing because it's all thought. And at the same time, we use external uh, tools, you can say. So we project these things externally and our mind uses them as tools to convince itself that it's made the change. And that's okay, it's called a magic trick. There's nothing wrong with it. We perform magic tricks all the time, okay? So so in these, in these different, apparent pursuits of these through these magic tricks i use all of them to actually undo the thought that we're supposed to be aging that thought that's what it's really all for whether it's that stuff or not so it was fun it was fun for me to see too because um i wasn't sure what my friend was going to give me because she was supposed to try to trigger me she was supposed to be something that could trigger me so that I could practice um, perceiving it as uh, as unlimited awareness, perceiving her attacks as unlimited awareness, you know, from the from that position. OK. Um, and so we were in this workshop. And so my friend, she caught me completely off guard. It was so good. She know, you know, she listens to all wisdom dialogues. It was really awesome. Um, she goes, she, she goes, first she, go, first she touches my knees and she goes, oh, your knees, the, oh, these are kind of hard. You probably need to do some more blocking on these. And then she goes, and then she goes, geez, I never noticed how deep your crow's feet are. How much did you say you're paying for that micro needling? Do you really think that's a good in investment? I never even noticed them before. Now they look so much deeper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was the point of the exercise right uh it, it's like it, it's like yes and then and then and then when she said it it's immediately like all of that stuff is for perceiving through the illusion all of that stuff is for healing that's why it doesn't bother me when you say something like that because I know it's not for getting an outcome. Look, you guys, if you have the wrong mindset, here's the mindset that time can affect a body. This is the wrong mindset is what I'm saying. If you're harboring that wrong mindset and you're not willing to let it go, the shit that you try to do on the surface is not going to make you <clears throat> younger. It's not going to work. It's not going to seem to work. It's not going to even appear to work. You know why? You know why it's not going to appear to work because it's it has to manifest according to your beliefs see people oh my gosh that reminds me of that fucking one where people plump up their face with those uh, with those fillers okay <laughs> you guys plumping your face up with those fillers 
right? And and holding on to the belief. Look, if you're not if you're plunk, plumping it up without the belief, no problem. But if you're plumping up your face with fillers and you're under the belief that time affects bodies, guess what? Your skin might be tight, but you don't look younger. You don't look younger. Your uh, your energy says what you believe. You just look like an old person with tight ass skin from injections. That's all that happened. <laughs> Man, it's like a comedy show around here. Ah, oh, aloha, Cynthia. Oh, I love you, Max. Thank you so much for joining. It's so fun to have you on. <laughs> aloha, Natalie. I love you. Ah. Oh. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing any of these things. That's not it. It's the way you would use them. It's the way you would use them. Would you use them to see how, you know, even just going through the process, it takes thinking. In those thoughts, there's all these uh, ideas just being offered to you about how time affects bodies. And everyone's scared of that because we believe time affects bodies. We make death possible. Everyone's afflicted with this belief. This is why we have all the conflict that we ever had. You know, your friend gets triggered with you. They're afraid of death. What do they need? They need reassurance that everything's okay. They need reassurance. That's all. And you're always going to be hanging out with the people that need you. And you need them. It's like you're their savior and they're yours. You know, at any given time, the person who has more awareness is the one who extends it. That's how we love each other. Whichever person has more awareness extends it to the other. To the other. They're not giving anything away. You know, one of the uh, one, one of the sayings in A Course in Miracles is to have, give all to all. Because when you extend like that, that's for you. They're actually calling for it. They're asking for it in your name. It's immediately yours. Jennifer, I absolutely love what you are talking about with the cream. Every single time that you share a new video about an essential oil on Miracle Botanicals, I buy every single one that connects to my soul. Thank you for bringing up essential oils, Jennifer. I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, you got, some of you guys might not even know yet. Maybe you're listening to me for the first time. I have an essential oil company. It's called Miracle Botanicals, miraclebotanicals.com. On miraclebotanicals.com, I sell creams, right? <laughs> and, you know, I, I also love my creams. My creams are freaking amazing. In fact, I think they're the best. It's funny that I find myself trying other shit because, you know, whenever I go back to them, I'm like, what am I doing trying other shit? This is the best. <laughs> I've got a rejuvenating face and body butter on there. <clears throat> it's got great ingredients on there, in there, things that are really natural and things that I've researched to be great for skin. The thing of it is, like anything, they don't work like you think. What I love about using essential oils is this, whether it's a cream or whether you're smelling it or anything like that, essential oils have awareness of what I'm talking about. They know that what I'm saying is fucking true. They know this. And you know what? They can align with you mentally because they are awareness, okay? They're actually, everything's awareness. Essential oils, if they're, if, if they're measured in the, in the uh, illusory realm, their measurement shows that they're vibrating at a high frequency. That's the kind of measurement that, that, that they'll give you. Now, in the Bible, it talks about how the plants of the earth are put on the earth um, because there's something in them that can heal every human ailment, okay? So it's not like you have to find the particular plant. 
that's good for your human ail ailment. It's not saying that. That's how it would be taken for a lot, a lot of the times. You just have to find the right one and then it's going to cure your human ailment. No, it's not that. It's because they are awareness. It's because they know that what I'm talking about is true. And essential oils deliver messages you know, to you. Basically, when you're using them, you're communicating with them. You're interacting with a substance. You're interacting with something. You could say that nature and everything put in nature uh, in, the field, in your field of experience is like a gift from God. The essence of it knows the essence of you right? The man-made things, the people-made th things in the world are the gifts that you gave to yourself. They don't know shit. <laughs> see the difference? It, it's it's kind of it's kind of simple to see the difference. It's like the world that the the world that's made manifest and it's nature, whatever. It's like you didn't uh, you and your your species, your kind didn't kind of like make this stuff in the world, make it up. So these are your children, the things that are in the world. Okay, the things that are in the world they always deteriorate and decay and all that kind of stuff nature in itself we got projecting decay over it right but in itself it's sustainable it's completely regenerated all by itself you could tell that's a gift from god the gifts from god hold the knowledge of god the gifts you've given to yourself do not contain the same kind of knowledge they're not self-regenerating like that okay so the body as you made it is not self-regenerating because it's based on your thoughts but as you made it, it's not a reality. Only as the truth is it a reality. So we just it's just a matter of undoing what we projected onto it. So from moment to moment, I mean, don't you guys think that sounds much more fun than looking at the world the way you have been looking at it and all the stupid ass shit and drama you're getting into all the time? Those are like, you know, I don't know. It sounds really fun to me. As you can tell, I'm really excited today, right? I could tell by my tone, I'm really excited today. Like, wow, this really got me jazzed up. I got a jazzed up tone. <laughs> uh, I love myself. <laughs> I love that about myself. I have one friend on Facebook who actually gets in the mirror on Facebook with his, uh, he's in the mirror and he's got a selfie going and he's videotaping himself um, saying that he loves himself in the mirror. And I just want to say thank you so much for that. My daughter brought that up this week she met you and she said I, I know that dude where do I see him she's like oh yeah he's the guy who goes in the mirror and says I love myself on Facebook and I go I've seen that too that is so amazing and you know thank you for anyone who does stuff like that just a really sweet loving energy I'm not talking about the kind of I love myself that's like uh, egotistical and better than other people it's not like that at all but, you know, learning to love ourselves and respect ourselves enough that we won't uh, keep on being uh, committed to concepts that hurt us and make us go through processes of deterioration. See, it's like lo really showing love and respect to yourself. No matter the, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, here we are. No matter the perception that appears, I know there are gifts awaiting Christmas true, Christmas true meaning. Gifts that keep on giving. Gifts that keep on giving. That's Glenn. You're so awesome, Glenn. I just love you so much. Your spiritual depth and your sense of humor just knock my socks off. I'm not, I'm never wearing socks. Yes, I am when it's cold, but not that's not now. <laughs> Leia's like, that's bullshit. I've seen you wearing socks a bunch. <laughs> not at this moment. <laughs> Leia's calling me on some shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i've worn your song so um uh, oh yeah i just want to throw this in there because i just was made aware of it i will be speaking at the church this sunday this is so exciting center for spiritual living 10 a.m uh i'm gonna have a good ass time it'll, it'll be really fun to have some people come out and have a good ass time with me Anne is definitely coming thanks Anne. i appreciate that um that, that'd be really fun if not you get to watch it so, you know, it goes live. You can go to the Center for Spiritual Living. I don't know the link. Center for Spiritual Living in Pahoa. They got a live thing. You can go live and stream it live. Do you know the address? 
No, but it's 31st in paradise. It's that church that has the pretty glass on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be fun. Yay. Yay. I, I feel really excited about this. I, I love the, I, I love the pastor. She's a, she's a real sweetie and she's really, you're going to come. Yay. That's so fun. Yes. Uh, can you maybe define, define thought? I have the feeling you mean more than just the self-talk. I assume it to be. Oh yeah, because the subconscious, uh, you know what we're calling the subconscious, and that's basically uh, we're not uh, consciously aware of the thoughts that are playing out. They bubble up, but they bubble up into the consciousness. Like someone, for instance, that one I shared with you earlier about uh, the thought about the person's young and that's why she doesn't get the expression re expression lines yet right uh so you know we might not think of that as being self-talk or anything like that but yeah it's all self-talk even images that are projected into the field even even everything in the perception that's all the effect of thought okay so there's the effect of thought and we project over the images to keep the images going in our mind, even when they don't seem to be interpreted through the, the five senses, right? So we keep different images going in our mind. That is the, also the effect of thought. So if you're not perceiving the actual thought, but you're just perceiving the effect of thought, uh, what I recommend is go to the very first eth effect of thought, which is sensation. OK, and I know I'm, you know, some of my friends are resistant to that. Uh, uh, that's and anyways, that's the perception I get that they're resistant to that because some of my friends say they cannot feel the physical form. The thing is, the physical form isn't a physical form. It is a sensory field. OK, the physical form is kind of like a, a, an expression. First, there's a sensory field. And then the physical form is an, is an expression of that. And the images that you perceive are due to an identification as something to do with the physical form. No physical form, no image, okay? You have, an, you have a physical form, you make an image about it. Um, <clears throat> so when it comes to the thought, a lot of the times we're not even seeing what thoughts are crossing our mind because we're into the perception, we're into the image, we're more into the image. So to go all the way back to the first effect of thought, look at how the energy field of the body feels right now. Just get a sense of how it feels in the energy, the energy body sense right now. Uh, you know, one easy way to do it is notice your breath. It's really simple. These are really, they're so simple, they get missed. They, they're so simple. Someone will say to me, all I feel is emptiness. Okay. It, there's a movement to emptiness too, because you're having a, a, a perception right now. If you're having a perception of anything in the field, it's coming from movement. It's becoming coming from energy and motion. That energy that it's in, that's in motion is in motion in the body energy field. field. It's a visceral sensation. All right. So get in tune with that visceral sensation and the thoughts will just be revealed to you. The, the thoughts that underpin your apparent reality. You know, I got, I got friends who deal with chronic pain. Okay. In one sense, there's chronic pain. In another sense, there's a idea that you're not feeling anything. That's an idea that you're not feeling anything. At some point, you decided it wasn't safe to feel, okay? That's just an idea. Let yourself feel. And let yourself feel. In your, it's a felt experience. Then you're, you, you totally got it. You, you're, you're not going to have any questions because all the information comes to you. Yes, I'm afraid of my body. Yeah, that's a really common thing. So it's, a, it's, it's really, you know just to give you some perspective and to maybe help clear the fear, you know, once you really allow yourself to have those visceral sensations, it's a sensual experience, right? It's a nice, it's a, it's a very enjoyable sensual experience. 
People are afraid of this intensity. The intensity is just fear. You're never going to get more intensity than what you can handle in the given moment. You're giving that to yourself because you're, you need it but you're never gonna get more intensity than what you can handle in the present moment. So it's gonna be perfect for you all the time. It's your thinking that makes it hard. It's your thinking that makes it scary. Oh, this is too much. I better call 911, you know? Um, it's like that kind of thinking. If you would be willing to like take a step back and just calm down your thinking, you're gonna see that uh, that that this stuff isn't really, really as powerful as you thought. And, and it, it, look at this. Every bit of intensity is just ecstasy in disguise because that feeling sense is really good. It's really nice. Whatever you perceive as intensity, you're misperceiving it. You're thinking about it wrong, actually. Isn't that funny? Uh, Ikai says, I always, in capitals, have a jazzed up tone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, Jennifer says, hope you are so cute. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing all of your tools to help us humans figure out how to get in tune with our feelings. Yes, my thinking is scary. Oh, I know. I'm telling you. I, I know. I, I know. I know all about it. I had to go in, you guys, and it was it was rough. And uh, and, you know, I'm I'm grateful that I can, you know, having come to the other side of it have all this to share with you guys, you know, especially coming from my point of view, I didn't have anyone like me to listen to that was talking about stuff like this. And man, I'll tell you, it was dark and it was scary. Okay. And it's, and, 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 you know, I can tell you that it's only scary because it's a choice to have it scary like that. Okay. Um, and, and and when you're willing to see it, it just clears up right away. And I know that having gone through the experience myself and being able to uh, to demonstrate what it's like to my own mind, that all of you are are so much further ahead. I know it's like I I know you're so much closer to seeing it, even if you think you haven't seen it yet or you think it's a long way off, because. Your, even your, just your thinking, it's a long way off. I would totally release you from that because there's no such thing as time, remember? There's no such thing as time. So it doesn't have to take any amount of time for you to see this. It's just a choice in one moment. You just decide it's done. You just, you, you, you turn the corner right there and then nothing disturbs you again. Nothing disturbs your peace again right? Not even the sense that your peace is being disturbed. That's what I mean by it. Not even getting the sense that your peace is being disturbed. So one of my friends asked me this past weekend, uh, do, you know, don't you ever go through periods where you get depressed? She was talking about going through a period where she got depressed for a couple of days. I'm like, no, I do not go through any periods like that. It's not like that. You know, a sense that there isn't any upset feelings. It's just an opportunity for me to see. I don't identify with the upset feeling. I don't consider myself as uh, having an upset feeling. I don't, I don't need to go through anything. It's just, it, it, it's just a, an upset feeling is arising. It's in the energy field. And I'm just experiencing an upset feeling. It's not a problem. It's all, it's all it is. It, all it is, is it's uh, reflecting something that I would be released from. As soon as I'm willing to be released from that upset feeling reveals an even deeper sense of gratitude and joy. Okay. And you could say enlightenment because the burdens are released. It's an opportunity to release burdens. So that's how I look at it. So, you know, the way I see my friends go through something like that, it's as if they just got their ass kicked from feeling like this feeling. And the only reason you're going to get your ass kicked from feeling a feeling is you're fighting it. You're using thoughts and images, right? To fight against this feeling that you're giving yourself just so that you could sink deeper into the reality that it is. Go, go deeper into the truth of the matter. 
right? That's the only reason it's being given to you. It's not a, it's not really a scary thing getting a guilty or a fearful or depressed or anything like that kind of feeling. For me, they don't need to last over time. I don't mind if they do because the whole time they seem to be lasting. I'm just using it. There's only this moment. I saw a friend post post on Facebook this past week. It cracked me up to no end. It was an invitation to evaluate yourself. Like basically it's taking these points, uh, you know, like how good are you at being humble? And I don't know these different things. How, are, how good are you admitting that you made a mistake and all these different things? And, you know, he wasn't asking me, so I was not going to give an answer to him, but, you know, to share with you guys right here and right now, you don't have any need to evaluate yourself. It's only right now in this moment, what would you be willing for, right? Humility only in this moment is willingness to see things as they are. That's all it is. Your expression, remember, is programmed from the, it's like, it's like DNA, you can call it DNA programming. DNA doesn't even exist either. Okay. Let us call it, but let's just call it that. Cause it's a good way to, it, it's a good way to keep the mind entertained and also point to what's really true. Okay. Let's just call it DNA programming. So DNA programming is always changing. Right? It's very changeful. It's based on the choice you would make in the given moment. You know, you're getting the, the information that you're getting right now is an effect of how the DNA has already been programmed. Your power in that, your creative, your creativity within that is this ability to choose something different, something other than what you've been programmed with. So, you know, I'm sure, I'm positive that we can absolutely go beyond regenerating human bodies, but actually completely changing and rewiring how we're projecting them. We don't have to be projecting as if we're on a trajectory toward death. We chose that out of a guilty feeling, out of a fear of feeling these feelings that arise, these feelings which are actually ecstasy. You know, we're so loved, we wouldn't be even be given anything that's not ecstatic bliss, okay? But we give ourselves these upset feelings and it actually, actually because they benefit us. They help us to undo this idea that we could or that we should be at a certain level at a, of deterioration by a certain age. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? I know I've bought into it a bunch of times. One time, one time stands out in my mind so strongly because it was the first time I really saw, I was like, wow, my mind is working like that. I was probably just like, I don't know, 42 or something like that. And I'm walking through the living room and we had a huge TV in the living room and I had a, and it had a picture, this really old face on the screen. And, it, and, and I just heard my mind go, God, aging sucks. And I'm like, whoa, that's a thought right there that because I, you know, I, I was just becoming more and more aware of just automatic thoughts, not automatically believing that they're my thoughts, just noticing thoughts that circulate the field, right? Just noticing these kinds of thoughts. And I was like, whoa, that's a, that's a painful thought. And, and you know, speaking of subconscious, subconscious, basically what you're not yet aware of, the thoughts that you're not what yet aware of. This is a human condition. It's not, it's not limited to a body. It's a human condition. And that's why it's circulating the mind. And that's why it's coming up through the subconscious. That's why I would be able to hear a thought like that. So it's like, oh, yeah. If you're not, it's one thing to say aging sucks and to feel it and to recognize it 
right? But you're you're just seeing like a passing thought. This is one of those human condition kind of thought, right? The human condition kind of thought. It's just passing along. I wouldn't have seen it if I wasn't that aware. And it's automatically believed and it makes you feel like shit. All day long, people are just making themselves feel like shit over and over again. Kind of like subconsciously, unconsciously. Because not seeing the true cause and effect. Oh, this is actually what's causing aging. Because aging sucks. I'm not going to fucking disagree with that. Aging sucks. Okay? It's just that I'm not going to believe that it's inevitable on top of that. <laughs> it's also something to be very grateful for, though because of what it's for, you know, as like an, like something that comes on someone against their will, which is not the truth, but as a, as an illusion, as something like that, it sucks. But because of what it's for, it's something to be grateful for. Also, it's nothing. That's the best part. Would you keep it? And, and, you know, you answer that from moment to moment. You answer that from moment to moment. If you don't see it in the subtle thoughts, it just occur to you. You're going to get the perception of it. People, even other people saying it to you. It doesn't matter. It's not like it's different from you. The mouth seems to be over there. It seems to be on a different body with different color hair than yours, right? But it's actually coming from the same mind. So when you get the perception, someone is saying something like that upholding the perception of aging they're not wrong it's not time to start telling people they're wrong it's time to look at ah i see how i'm making this up i'm even making them tell me i'm even making them tell me that time affects bodies thank goodness it's not the truth that's all it is it's really that simple right in your mind you don't even have to bother anyone about it I love this comedy show, the best one. Thank you, Amanda. I love it too. <laughs> That's why I keep coming back. <laughs> I got a big shame trigger today from a text. This is from Stace, from Stacy. I laughed because it was such obvious, obvious ego magic. The person literally said, shame on you and the family. I'm disappointed in you, Stacy. Yes. Ah, oh, thank you so much. What a gift. That's so clear. That is so clear. It's like, ding, ding, ding. You got me. You read my fucking mind. <laughs> but clearly, I've got something I need to face slash feel here. Can you talk about shame? So basically, she's speaking your mind, okay? How do you know if she's not speaking your mind? It doesn't trigger you. You can just hear it and go, aw, that's so cute. It didn't really feel that, really feel like that. Like, oh, that's adorable. She's trying to pro project her shame on me. That is so sweet. I love her. And you know how you know it came from your mind? You don't feel at peace. That's all simple, nothing to feel ashamed about there. That means that it's an opportunity for you to be released of something that you don't need. You don't need it anymore. That's why you're getting, you're giving yourself an opportunity to be released from it. Go like this. Okay. I got another person coming in here. Alexia, welcome. We're just talking about shame. Yeah. Someone got a text that said shame on you and the family. <laughs> How do you like that? yeah and the family and i'm disappointed in you by name like to say i'm disappointed in you alexia Dang. yeah that's hardcore right yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> so you know you know when you get the perception of someone saying something like that to you if you're feeling non-peace that's how you know that's your programming you gave that to them to say because you knew that you could use it for undoing some programming, for getting released from some, from some, from some programming right there. What a blessing. So it's like, I, when I heard that, I was like, oh my God, that is so clear the way they said that. 
shame on you not even making any bones about it not even like beating around the bush like shouldn't you think about what you've done or something like that It's just like straightforward shame on you and your whole family. No, it is making me laugh, but maybe I'm resisting my belief. Well, you know what? Look at Stacy. It's real simple. Forget about all the thinking. Maybe I'm resisting my, my belief. Nothing like that. Go straight to the feeling. Do you feel at peace or not at peace? That's simple. It's not, it's not a self-evaluation because it's changing from moment to moment. It's not how you felt before. It's just right now. It's not how you felt earlier when you first heard it, for instance. It's just right now. If there's peace right now, you got it. If there's non-peace right now, there's a thought that's interfering with it. It's just like that simple. <laughs> it could be the thought, maybe I'm resisting my belief. It could be that thought. Okay, because it's like all, all these thoughts, they just show, that pop up, they, they show up out of nothing. That's why, you know, I'm always laughing because everything I say is nonsense because I know it's a symbol. It's a symbol. The uh, only thing that can really be can really com be communicated is love. And my aim is to communicate through the symbols of the words, but the symbols of the words don't really mean anything. So everything that I share with you is meant to release you from thoughts that are hurting you. That's all. That's it. It's just for release. They don't really mean anything. The words don't really mean anything themselves. So just see if they're heavy or light. Okay. You don't have to hold on to any, any kind of, any kind of words. At first it was a quick trigger, but then it was hilarious. You know, that's what's meant for you, for your triggers to end in laughter and harmony, a harmonious laughter, mm -hmm. a beautiful laughter that's laughing with everyone else. Okay. Just a beautiful, it's not like laughing at someone or anything like that. A beautiful, harmonious, it's like a song. It's like the most beautiful song you ever heard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so laugh. It's good. <laughs> what do we have here no 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 one's asking me anything anymore you guys just like to listen to me that's awesome <laughs> i'm happy about that <laughs> i know what you mean though it can get confusing the mind always wants to go back and that was that whole thing about uh, about that post i saw this weekend about evaluating yourself, like evaluating how good you are, how good you are at being hum humble, how good you are at admitting you were wrong, how good you are at uh, taking advice. I don't know. I'm just making shit up now. These different things, uh, they seem like, you know, worldly things, basically, because they have to do with behavior. Behavior is a worldly thing. Mm -hmm. Behavior has nothing to do with how you're thinking right now. It's just the past playing out. Let it be what it is. It's okay. Uh, you know, however you're thinking, right, it's right now, that's where the creativity is. So if you're evaluating yourself in the moment, you're not being creative because you're thinking about the past. You have to be thinking about the past to evaluate yourself. Okay. So right now in this moment, you know, recognizing, am I at peace? Do I feel at peace? If I don't feel at peace, then I'm open for a different interpretation of whatever it is that I'm thinking. That thought may be, Maybe I'm resisting my belief. Notice how it feels. If it feels light, that's one thing. It might feel light at a certain point. You might be like, holy shit, this is really heavy right now. And then the spirit whispers, maybe you're resisting your belief. And then you're like, I don't even know what the fuck that means, but you're like, oh. <laughs> So if they're good, they're good. If they're not good, then you know, because you're, because it's disturbing your peace. You don't need to keep any thoughts and just use them, hold them really lightly because it changes too. The ego will use any thought later. It's just right now. Natalie, I had a si similar thing as shame on you comment this week. All right. It's a good week for shaming. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you got it too, Leia? Yeah. Yeah, nice. <laughs> it's perfect. It's going around. <laughs> I'm glad it's yeah. popping up in my mind. Did you get some of that too, Alexia? Um, Any shame this week? A little temptation today to shame myself about being late everywhere. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. How do you feel about that? There's no reason funny because I because I don't know just right away when I want to make that mean something about me. Right. So Alexia was tempted with the thought that, you know, she's late everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> and she could tell that was an upset thought right away. Right. You could yeah. tell. And then you're like, shit, I could just be released from this thought. Yeah. It's almost like I'm, I'm going into it and then I, I relax from it, but then I'm almost expecting the people to say shit. <laughs> you're expecting the people to say yeah, shit. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. That's nice. Well, you know, <laughs> it, you know, here's the thing. Anything can occur. Okay. So it's like you, when it, when it comes to people shaming you, you can be completely released from that. Right. You can be completely released from that one. One way to look at it is if they do project any shame, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, that basically it, it clears the fear of getting someone projecting any shame onto you. Yeah. If they do project shame onto me, it's going to be awesome just to see, <laughs> just to just to watch and and see what's possible when someone projects shame onto me. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. Yesterday, I actually laughed because someone directly said, you fucked up my cucumbers. <laughs> you, you Someone said you fucked up my, my cucumbers. Yeah. Nice. And then how was that for you? Well, it was like an aggressive and playful tone at the same time, but I mostly, I laughed, but I did notice little tinges of like, oops. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. That's just part of the ride. That's part of the experience. You get little, you, you get little stuffs like that. So whenever those, whenever those occur like that, just remember you're giving, you're being given an opportunity to see even more, mm -hmm. you, you know, because, because it's going to be a manifestation of what you thought was possible. You thought that fucking up some cucumbers mm -hmm. was possible in the first place. Yeah. So it's kind of like, it, it's not, it's not saying that that's anything bad about you. This is what I'm talking about is the human condition. Like it's possible to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, forget about admitting your mistakes. <laughs> you don't make any mistakes. You are dreaming that it's possible to make mistakes. No one else makes any mistakes either. See what I mean? So how so how could you be in it, you know, in acknowledging you, you can't acknowledge the truth ever if you're interesting, if you're interested in whether you're admitting your mistakes or not. That is one step in the direction. It's one step in the direction because it kind of opens you up a little bit. You know, you might be tight at one time and you're like, I'm not. Uh, no, I'm so afraid of making a mistake. I'm never even going to admit when I, when I make a mistake. Right. And then you go one step further than that. You're like, wait a minute. Fuck. No one can even make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you know, you just really don't have that anymore. <laughs> admit when you made a mistake. Right. It's like, you, you might find yourself telling someone you made a mistake, but, but, but behind that, you're going to know that that's not true. You know, even after, even after you're aware of these things being untrue for a time, you're probably going to be watching the manifestation of yourself playing it out still as if it's true. That's okay. Just because you're not demonstrating what the ab absolute truth is, doesn't mean you're on, not on your way to doing that. Basically, that's on the way to doing that. Your, your acknowledgement, your willingness to see that what you're speaking is not the truth is really enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really enough. So this guy was was yelling at me saying, you think you're so spiritual and better than everyone. This is Natalie. I was like, huh? I guess I do, actually. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Good awareness. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's fun that that really helps people i noticed that too because i'll get that too you know once in a while i'll get a person coming up and 
uh, being like, yeah, you just think you know everything. And then somehow I'll demonstrate to them how uh, I, you know, I take them, whatever they're saying is my teaching too, you know? So they're just like, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that's just how it is for me you know everything everyone that that uh, uh appears in my perception is so precious to me they mean so much to me because of who they are the image i made of them means nothing to me so whatever what whatever i seem to see about them that's all just playful and fun but it's not like who everyone is, who you guys are is like really special and dear to me and also teaching me all the time. And I feel like totally uplifting me and supporting me no matter what you even seem to be doing, right? So people can get that. They can feel that. A lot of the times they're gonna conceptualize uh, they're gonna conceptualize you, especially if they're if they see you often or get to know you because that's just what people do. They project, they project their own things onto the people around them. And uh, they start playing out their own dramas and traumas around the people around them. That's what they do. Now, uh, that doesn't have to happen. Tony and I were just having a conversation about that the other night when Tony said something I was like, really profound. I was like, wow. Um, you know, he's <laughs> talking about how, you know, this feeling experience the way we have this feeling experience we're able to feel how it feels to project ourselves as these bodies it allows us to return to compassion very easily and not to hold anything against each other that's why we could live together and do business together and you know not have um arguments not have any um uh, mean mean conversation toward each other <laughs> like <laughs> you know uh, not not um trying to put each other down or anything like that um because we don't have to have those kinds of projections we don't have to, have to have that kind of activity and i noticed in my own life as far as people that i hang around with on the regular um you know i just don't have any people in my own life in my own experience who would hold on to a negative interpretation of me or a negative perception of me. That's just not a thing for me um, at this point in time and possibly going forward. I don't know. I still work with everyone, everyone that shows up in my experience. I don't even have a choice in that at all. I'm just noticing that there's so many who are willing at this point in time to relate with me from a holy relationship kind of perspective that there's no need there's no there's no space it seems it seems like a you know in an illusion we set it up in time which doesn't really exist but it seems like there's only so many people that could fill the time it's not all the people we gave ourselves those kinds of limitations and, you know, the, the goal is to open up completely those limitations too, because there is no such thing in time as time. And we're actually in communication with everyone all the time. Mm -hmm. You see, the way we set it up in this illusion, it's as if we can only be in relate in relating with a few people at once. And, you know, apparently as long as it has to seem like that, in my experience, I only have the ones who are willing to be in holy relationship with me for the most part uh, you know as i said all kinds of different people arise and i'll work with whatever the energy it is just that i'm not making dates i don't find myself making dates with people <laughs> that want to uh, that want to use energy in that way uh, even for business or anything it's pretty funny It, you know, it just shows that the, it just shows the power of our mind too over the manifestation. Like Jesus said, you have dominion over this world. This world doesn't have any power over you. He got super pissed off at his the disciples one time because he came out of the boat. Uh, it came out of the bottom of the boat. They're like, oh my God, it's a big ass storm or something. And he came out of the boat and he just stopped all the weather right there. And he was just kind of like, what the fuck? You guys can't control the weather? That's kind of like what it is like. 
you know, but it's like, it, it's like, you know, um, those ascended masters who are not, you know, uh, manifesting as a physical form walking around on the earth, they're kind of like, yeah, it's like, it's, it's like mind boggling to us that anyone would have ever, anything occur that think they could have anything occur to them or have anything on them, or even have to wash their bodies because stink gets on them. Right. When they didn't want it there. Like just to, to project that you didn't want it like that. Like that's how we made it. Cause that's how we wanted it. We actually worked really hard. You can say, you know, I talked about ancestors earlier and how that's actually us. That's a symbol of our belief. We worked really hard. Look at when you think about ancestors, look at they freaking uh, the story of ancestors. Look how they look at, look how they, they worked so hard to make it what it is right now. Right. That story is a symbolic story of how hard you work to make this perception what it is right now. You had to work really hard because it's the opposite of what creation is. So now actually undoing it is going to be way easier and it requires ease. Mm -hmm. It requires willingness to be easeful. It requires willingness to be joyful. Mm -hmm. Remember when we just started cracking up, Alexia, when we were in that Course in Miracles meeting? <laughs> remember what that line was? You remember anything about that line? It was something about, it was something about like all God's want, God wants from you is to be joyful. Me and Alexia just start cracking up. <laughs> we're like, and someone's like, what are you guys laughing about? And we're like, that was just so fucking good. We just can't help but laugh about it. <laughs> it's like for a second, you thought whatever you're going to, going to read was going to like have a serious tone to it or something, you know, it's just like, <laughs> basically all god wants from you is to be joyful right <laughs> like, <laughs> wow that's pretty said pretty simply right there <laughs> so you're out God's wishes. yeah I, i'm just <laughs> yeah it, it's like and, and it's almost like to the ego you're almost like doing something wrong right especially if other people are suffering like other people mm -hmm. suffering uh, doesn't actually need you to be joyful like that's what it needs mm -hmm. that's the anecdote mm -hmm. actually one of my friends I just heard he recently passed away he was like the epitome for me of the guy who was never gonna let go of his patterns and he was like so good at it too he was like he was huge he was probably like 400 pounds you know and and basically you know just like accumulating every every and like a really sad look on his face and really bummed out and uh, and all this so then i'm like hmm what is it with this fucker so then i'm sitting at the bar at kaleo's this is years ago and he comes up and he tells me uh he tells me what a shame the that the gas prices are so low and i go oh really why is that he's like because other people have to pay much higher ga gas prices or something like that, or because it's killing people or something like that. Mm. And he goes, and, and, and I go, so there's no chance of being gratitude in gratitude for the gas being low then, huh? And he goes, no, that wouldn't be right for me to be in gratitude. <laughs> that wouldn't be fair. That wouldn't be, that, that wouldn't be nice to those people who are not in gratitude. I know how you think. I don't want to hear about the way you think. I think you're fucking full of shit. I love you but I think you're full of shit. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, 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 so, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to try to force it on anyone. <laughs> I'm not going to be forced being happy on, on anyone. You know, I just, after that, took out my essential oils. And then he told me how disgusting it was to pull out essential oils while people are eating. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm, I'm really batting a zero with you. <laughs> <laughs> anyways uh we ended up getting along really well <laughs> whenever i'd see him i just love him up right i didn't hang out with him i didn't make dates with him or anything like that but whenever i'd see him i just love him up and he'd be really happy to see me and and uh we have a great time and i know one reason why he'd be really happy to see me is because he could just tell me what's on his mind and i don't mind right that it makes it fun it makes it fun. And you know what? He didn't have a bunch of negative shit to say to me for very long. Really? Right? Probably if I let him hang out with me a lot, he'd come up with some more of that stuff. Just because that's, you know, that's what's going on. 
That's what's going on. You know, they, that's the program. That's the program that's being played out. And unless there is some willingness to change the program, that program is going to keep on playing out. At some point, there will be willingness to change the program. I mean, I don't even know. It could have it could have occurred before he bit the dust, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> I love all the different words we have and phrases we have for dying. <laughs> we have to make up all these different things because it doesn't really croak. That's a good one. Yeah. They croak. <laughs> uh, yeah, it doesn't really it doesn't really mean anything. It's just it's a total illusion. Uh, Milo is back on with his technical difficulties. Um, those are pretty entertaining. You keep vanishing back now. So how? you keep vanishing and then back now okay so how can you think aging sucks when you are most the the most beautiful sight ever i'd rather look at you than anything else <laughs> well thank you so much <laughs> that's fucking awesome uh that's a beautiful thing to uh, think about anyone i love it okay what essential oils repel mosquitoes i want all organic oils do you have Yes, and I know them. They're not at the top of my head. And maybe I'll do an essential oil live video to talk about essential oils. That would be fun too. Citronella, lavender, allspice, peppermint. Oh, I just did an article on that. If you go to miraclebotanicals.com. No, I didn't do the article. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't do the article. I was thinking about doing the article. I did, I did three articles today though. One of them wasn't that. <laughs> I probably already did the AI stuff about it and just need to put it together. I put a blend together. I already made a blend for someone, a custom blend. All right, so back to that one. How can you think aging sucks? I don't think aging sucks. The thought aging sucks only occurs to me. I notice it. I recognize what it is. I recognize, I use that thought also um, in teaching, you could say. Yeah, right. But I don't really identify with the one who's thinking that aging sucks. And I know the thought that aging sucks actually doesn't mean anything. Get my drift. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, do you have castor oil? Yes, I do. <laughs> I like that it's thick. Me too. It doesn't rub off easily. You're right. It's good for castor packs. And if you don't know what a castor pack is, look it up. They're fucking awesome. Get my castor oil, put my essential oils in there, do the castor pack. You'll you'll see. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> I, I have great reviews. Look on miraclebotanicals.com. I don't know. Uh, people say all kinds of cool stuff on there. Um, for one thing, the consciousness. One thing that Constance shared earlier was that uh, the consciousness, it's like listening to, to wisdom dialogues. When she gets the essential oils, she uses the essential oils. She says it's like listening to wisdom dialogues without all the talking. So it's like, you know, <laughs> not that she doesn't like the talking. She tunes in all the time. But, you know, it's like, you, you know, you can get the same kind of effect because and that's because it's awareness. You're, what you're experiencing is the effect of awareness. You're not really experiencing the effect of the molecules, which I talk about all the time and their seeming effects, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but but the, the mind, as the way it's been conditioned, can also use these things like a magic trick and also, uh, you know, a, as if these things have effects on their own that don't have to do with awareness and make effects with them. That, that certainly can occur, it does. But the main thing about the essential oils is that they are awareness. They live in the awareness that you are who you are and not who you think you are. They are aware that time doesn't have any effect on you. They're aware that time doesn't have an effect on the, on the body and you cannot be aging. I don't think aging sucks is what he says. You don't have to worry in here, in the future. It's not bad at all. There is no, well, there's no future and there's no aging really. Okay. So the one that's saying, I don't think aging sucks is really taking it as the opposite of that. You just don't realize that no one enjoys deteriorating. 
No one enjoys pretending like they're living in a deteriorating body, okay? Uh, it's something to be grateful for, but it's not something uh, a pristine, innocent being uh, can take joy in, okay? Aging is not something it takes joy in like that, okay? It's something to be grateful for, but that's for a different thing. That's because of what it's for, all right? That's a lot of pretending, pretending like, and you know, you might not even know you're pretending. I, I get that all the time. You know why I'm so, so sure that that's a pretend, uh, a pretend comment is that, is that no one, no one wants to uh, go through the pain of it. It's a painful process. Okay. No one wants to go through that. There's a, the, the, um, the visceral, whatever, uh, sensations, the visceral sensations, um, the aesthetic aspect of it, that's like very, it's a very surface interpretation of a pain that's taking place in the mind. It's an interpretation of something. Okay. So it's not, it's, it's, it's like adding up this delusion that at this time, the body does this. Okay. Uh, like, like uh, doctors will even say, you go into the doctor's office, right. And they'll go, oh, well, at your age, you can expect to be living with chronic pain, for instance. And all you can do is just take drugs to try to mask it. You know, they'll talk like that to you as if that shit is true. That's not true. Okay. Uh, you know, and, 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 and then you're supposed to be okay with it. Oh, that's okay. Right. Now that's that way different from what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is gratitude for it because of what it's for. Oh, that's okay with me is a different thing. Because, you know, like, look at one of your young friends. Look at one of your young friends. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Milo is saying aging isn't deteriorating. Okay. Well, that's the way I'm speaking of it. Okay. If we want to make aging into something else, that's cool. That's the way I'm speaking of it, deteriorating. A wrinkle is deterioration. Basically, you lost collagen. That's what it means. That's what, it, that, that's what I'm talking about. Um, you might be talking about something other than what I'm considering aging, and that may be accumulating wisdom. That's not the same. It doesn't make wrinkles <laughs> or, or pain or anything like that. Uh, joints that don't work as well, uh, misshapen form, all that to kind of different stuff. Okay. Um, and he says it's not painful. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, so pain manifests in a lot of different ways. I love to see that too, because I hear from people too that say that it's not painful. They don't recognize the pain yet. Apparently, you haven't been on a block to to access what's hidden uh, that that you're hiding from yourself in the body sense. If you say it's not painful, you have not on your unearthed what is hidden in the body sense? Because this is one thing that I know if you're manifesting a body and if it's got one wrinkle on it, it's already in a lot of pain, okay? And if you go in and you access that pain, then you see you're like, oh, this is what I've been projecting and trying to hide from myself. At some point it manifests. It manifests as, a, as emotional pain a lot of the times, missing something, needing something, wanting something. That's one way it'll manifest. We can hide it from ourselves for a long time. Belief is very strong. We could hide the fact that we're pro projecting a pain body. We're hiding, hide the fact that we're projecting a pain body. Okay. And then he says, uh, wrinkles aren't ugly. I'm not saying they're ugly either. I'm not saying they are ugly. That may be one in interpretation, but that's not really the point of it. They are a, an effect of thinking that we are uh, meant to age or need to age. But I'm, I'm telling you too, uh, Milo, if you like wrinkles and you would keep them, you can. That's totally, that's totally cool. That's totally cool. If you like them and you want to keep them, you can totally keep them. That's, that, that's not a thing. Okay. The, what I'm saying is there's no reason why someone wouldn't be able to express exactly as they want to, right? There's uh, what I'm saying is there's no reason why if you wanted to, let's say you got a wild hair up your ass, 
and you decided you would rather look like you're 40, let's say. Put it in some closer perspective. I'll say, you you got a wild hair up your ass. You're just walking through the, through the lawn one day, uh, through your beautiful peanut grass covered lawn. And you just go, huh, yeah, I think I'd rather be like uh, looking like I'm around 40. There should be no reason why you couldn't do that. All right. That's what I'm saying. I'm not, it's not, it's not like a debate about whether wrinkles look good or gray hair looks good. Anyone can have that. You can have no wrinkles and gray hair if you want, right? You can have, I don't know, a couple wrinkles. Like, oh, I think a couple wrinkles. Okay. I want to look really old, like the witch that gave uh, Snow White the apple. All right. I want it like this. That's what I'm saying. There's no reason why you wouldn't be able to express in whatever way resonates for you, unless you're holding on to misbeliefs. I want to just say something about the, the appearance. Yes. Um, I had the experience on many occasions on psychedelics. On psychedelics, yeah. On psychedelics. Yeah. Like from an early age. Okay. Of looking at myself while I'm tripping. Yeah. And looking super young. Uh-huh. No matter what age I Yeah, because that's how you actually are. Yeah, and it's yeah. been really interesting. I remember having the thought, like, this is what I really look like. Right. And I can't see it. Yeah, exactly. You know, like I had that You've actually put layers over it. Yeah, I had yeah. that experience in my 20s. Uh -huh. I had that experience in my 40s yep. and my 50s. Yep. You know, and definitely it showed me that what I'm perceiving is not reality. Yes, that's right. You've layered and layered and layered over it. That's all that is. So it's like, it's like if you chisel away at those layers, which are really projected in the mind, you're going to see that you look about 25 years old. Yeah, that's you add, that's how you actually look. Whether you like, if you like the wrinkles, you can keep them. But, but, you know, in reality, you actually look around kind of like Alexia. Look at Alexia. You guys, can, can I show them you? Screen. There we go. Uh, Kind of no. Oh, okay. I won't. <laughs> she doesn't want to do it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so, so yeah, it's kind of like that. It's, it's like, it, no matter if you want to keep them, if you think they're good, if you think they're useful, you know, people, some people think it's useful. You know, they, they like looking like they're, uh, let's say 50, for instance, because they get some more respect that way. Maybe, you know, they're finding it useful. It's useful to them. Um, but there's there's no reason to do that unless the, unless you want to, is what I'm saying. How much battery do I have? It's telling me I'm low battery now. 7%. Okay, it's all right. I only got 10 minutes. It's all good. I think that'll last 10 minutes. We'll see. <laughs> In case I go out of battery, that's what happened. <laughs> Anyways, I wish you didn't keep van vanishing. I don't want to convince you of anything. I'm just giving you my perspective. Perfect. Thank you. I really appreciate your perspective. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. It's not, it's not that it's a bad thing. I don't look at people with wrinkles and go, oh God, that's so ugly or something like that. But I know the thought process that made that and the thought process itself isn't pretty. It's against you. Mm -hmm. That thought process is against you. It's not, that's what makes it not pretty. Okay. You are beautiful. Whether you have wrinkles or not, you are gorgeous. Everything about you is fucking awesome. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's, that's not what I'm saying. It's not like, oh, now that you got wrinkles, you're an ugly fucker. That's not, it's, it's so fun. <laughs> it's so funny the way that is. I think I am absolutely gorgeous with whatever, everything that seems to be uh, uh, aging and kind of looking like someone around 50 years old, right? I think all that stuff is fucking awesome. At the same time, I'm aware that it's caused by a thought that is totally against us. Okay. And no one has to go through the aging process, uh, uh, no one, but by a choice. So it's like when, when there's awareness of that, there's also for many of us, for most of us, willingness to see through that i mean there's gonna be your holdouts i fucking like aging 
I think wrinkles are beautiful. I just want to keep them. I just want to keep them in my life. You know why I would I would alleviate uh, wrinkles, all wrinkles in my perception, because that's how we're created. <laughs> no wrinkles. I would alleviate everyone of that burden. Each line is an indication of a burden being taken as if it's necessary and as if it's true. I would release everyone from burdens. Yes, my love, Ekahi. Can I hear you now? I'm asking you to unmute. Okay, I'm unmuted. Yes, you are. Loud and clear. Okay. Did you want me to unmute mute for a reason? Well, you had your hand up, so I thought you wanted to say something. Oh, no. I didn't have my, my hand up. I uh, turned off my iPad and, and put it on my iPhone because okay. I was running out of I was running out of battery all right well I'm lowering your hand then thank you okay <laughs> I love you I love and I appreciate you okay aloha aloha lower those hands <laughs> yeah that's a that's definitely a touchy subject too for the ego um, the one about aging, it's a, it's immediately going to get defensive about it. I've seen that many times. It's like, can't you just accept that this is the natural process? And it's like, that's not true that it's a natural process. Mm -hmm. Can you just accept that it's inevitable? That's not true that it's inevitable. And the, and I know that the more I'm willing to open up to that, the more evidence I can see of it, the only way, and you know, that's not an easy thing for me. That's not, a, that's the way I'm programmed. Uh, that's not an easy thing for like, like, it's easy for me to say and share to you in this moment because it's coming to me in this, in this moment, but as it's applied in the life, there's so much subconscious programming going on there. And, and, you know, I just want to see it. Why do I hear someone? Oh. Okay. Disabled talking. Okay. Thank you, Leah. little technical support. I check my battery. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So I'll be signing off soon. Just want to let you guys know I love you. You look awesome. All of you <laughs> look amazing. Okay. All of the uh, all of the um deterioration that we're projecting onto our onto each other. You look at it like this. That's our kuleana to heal the underlying belief that we project it we're proje basically projecting onto the world mm -hmm. onto ourselves and onto the world we're projecting a misbelief if you want to if you're not inspired to and you're in the and you know you're you're in the stage where you're 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 in the stage where you're accepting because that is one stage where you're just accepting aging you're accepting it as a reality you're accepting it as an inevitability that is one stage because now you're not in, oh my God, I just got to stop it. I'm going to get all these surgeries or whatever. Or you're just like, oh, I hate this. Oh God, this is so bad, right? That is one stage on the way to seeing that it's actually an unreality, mm -hmm. okay? So so, so that's just the, the trajectory and where I'm going with this. Um, I think everyone who joins me and who listens, I mean, I, I'm sure for some of you, it's pretty out there, you know? Um, and, and, you know, I don't want to disrupt your process too. If you're in the process of accepting or you're in, in a, in a stage where you're just basking in the acceptance, like, oh, I just feel so peaceful and so calm with all this aging. And uh, I just, I just love this aging. And I'm so glad that I'm going to die soon. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so glad it's so funny because I'll just get off on a tangent. I'll be like, oh, I just, so glad that all my friends are going to die at some point. This is so, this is so amazing. It's so beautiful. All my friends are just going to get old and 
uh, and then they're going to die. This is so good. I, I don't know. I just, I, I just like it. I just like to make light of it. I know, I know that's a, that's part of the process for, so, for a lot of people. Um, probably everyone goes through that same uh, process where you're like, uh, just in, in accepting that. And then there's a step beyond that. And, you know, uh, apparently I like to be on the cutting edge. And so most people aren't following me here yet, but there's a step beyond that. And that is that there is no reality to it. And it's that you're actually created like uh, in perfect health. That's basically what 25 years old is showing you. And, you know, in, in, in the perceived world, this is just perfect health. Everything works, right? Everything works nicely. It, it, it can eat anything. It doesn't seem to affect it, right? It's like, uh, it's like it, it, it can go in the sun. It can get sunburns and it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know everything everything moves nicely it's very buoyant right um it, basically that's way closer to the wholeness it's still not it because it's in the form of a body that seems like it can get hurt or something like it seems like something can happen to this still not it but it's way closer to uh what you're created as okay it's way closer to that so that's why when you unveil, unveil all the layers, there's not going to be wrinkles on anyone, but you can keep them as long as you want, as long as it's, a, you know, it's a kick in the pants, see some wrinkles on people. <laughs> all right. Akahi, thank you. Uh, I do look amazing. Yes, you do. And, and, uh, and, and you look, well, you look are amazing. Okay. Yeah, we we all look amazing. It's amazing. All right. <laughs> I love you all. Big hugs from Natalie. I got the chance to meet up with Casey and Billy. Yay. What a delightful surprise to my week. Loving all, all you WD peeps. Yay. We love you too, Natalie. All right. Um, I can't even hear you, but I want you to feel good. I'm just wanting you to feel good because I love you. You do look extremely beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. And you know what? I, I love that because when you when you want someone to feel good, that means you're open to feeling good. And I love that because you got to know what feeling good feels like. If you want to extend it, you've got to have it first. So um, thank you for that. I love you. Uh, I feel amazing. And I'll be back next week at the same time. I'll also be doing Wisdom Dialogues on Friday, 3 to 5, Kalani, Blue Moon Room, always free, just like this one. And I'll be at the church on Sunday, 10 a.m., Paradise and 31st, Hawaiian Paradise Park. Look it up, Center for Spiritual Living in HPP, Hawaiian Paradise Park, okay? It's also known as Keaau, K-E-A-A-U. And if you look it up, you'll find a way to stream that baby and you can uh, you can stream it. You could also watch it later if you want, okay? So hooray, everyone. Aloha, Asana. Thank you so much for joining today and tonight for you. Oh, Max, thank you so much. Oh, I know. I sense the relief. Uh, the release and relief as well. That's why I love to communicate with you. I could sense that in you and it's so joyous. Thank you so much. Until next time, mahalo, aloha, and a hui ho. Yay.